So what do you say we spend a little time in the garden today? All right, all right, all right. Everybody's got the itch to plant some. We've been hearing a lot from our customers and our viewers this time of year. Everybody's itching to get something in the ground. We're getting close to planting season. We're not quite there yet. Still probably got another month of cool weather, at least for us down here in South Georgia. Some of you've probably got longer than that. So we still got a little bit of time, but everybody's got the fever. It's kind of like that old boy on Saturday Night Live said one time, I got a fever. So you got the fever, but you can't really plant nothing right now. So what do you do? Well, it's a great time to kind of plan everything out for spring and even summer, maybe even fall. We like to plan our gardens because we like to think about what we've had in each spot or raised bed or whatever. It doesn't matter how big or small your garden is. Good idea to have a plan. Kind of write down what you intend on planting there and think about what you've planted there in the last year or two so you have a good rotation. So planting the garden allows us to figure out where we're gonna put certain things if our plots are not the same sizes. It also is gonna allow us to figure out you know, how much seeds we're gonna need for respective crop we're planting. How many transplants we're going to need to grow for that particular crop in that size plot a lot of advantages to kind of you know sketching out your garden or gardens on a piece of paper and figuring out where you're going to be putting everything now if you watch many of our videos on the channel you know that we really really preach crop rotation garden rotation not planting the same family of crops in the same spot in consecutive years and if we can go more than one year without planting the same family in the same spot, that's even better. Down here in the south, we have really, really heavy insect and disease pressure and rotation really, really helps with that. We see this all the time with people who are planting the same thing. They're planting squash or tomatoes in the same spot year after year. And they wonder why their pest pressure just keeps escalating and getting worse and worse and worse. It's just because they're not rotating and you just got eggs and fungal spores overwintering in that soil and it just magnifies year after year so we always want to make sure we rotate if we can and like i've said before even if you've just got a few raised beds you can rotate them you don't have to have a garden or as many plots as i have to rotate you can rotate on any scale but it's something you should definitely uh, plan on doing and think about when you're planning your garden. So let's take a quick look at all 10 plots we have here and then we'll kind of map it out on a piece of paper, talk about what we've had in those plots and how that is going to kind of influence our decision as to what we're going to be planting there this year. So I've got 10 garden plots on my homestead, which is only two acres. Now that we're working with a ton of land here, I've got 10 garden plots and I kind of split those up into two distinct areas. I have what we call the dream garden, which is here behind me. And then there's four plots on what I call the back half of the property. So we rotate amongst all 10 plots, but I kind of, I can't draw all that out on one piece of paper. So I kind of split it up. So the dream garden here has six plots. They're all 30 by 35 with a 10 foot walkway between them. And here we've got lots of different things going on. We've got some plots where things are gonna be growing here probably, you know, on through the spring. Collards, kale, stuff like that that's not going anywhere anytime soon. We've got some plots that have been cover crop mode and have tarps on them now. We've got our no-till plot, which we've got to put more compost on. We've got a plot with onions, which they're gonna be there for another few months. And we've got where we're gonna put our taters up front here which is ready to plant whenever the weather allows us to do so. And then as part of this back half of the property, I got my barn, which is right here. Got two plots right here. This plot right here is my biggest plot. It's about 40 by 50. And right behind it is a smaller plot that's about 20 by 40. Now this plot that's 40 by 50 is one contiguous plot but in terms of rotating things as we'll see in a minute when we write it down i do kind of split it in half it's not split in half you can't tell here but i do kind of draw an imaginary line down the middle of it and you can do that if you don't have more than one plot if you just got one plot just kind of split it up into imaginary sections there and use that as your basis for rotation and then we've got these last two plots here 
This little one right here is my smallest plot. It's about 20 foot wide, 30 foot long. Behind it's kind of this long skinny plot, 20 foot wide by about 60 foot long. So six of my plots, those in the Dream Garden, are all the same size. These other four plots on the back half are all different sizes and that just has to do with the layout of my land where this barn is and where I was able to kind of squeeze in some more garden spots there. 10 plots is a lot, but we like to have a lot of different plots just for this channel so we can grow a lot of different things show you different techniques show you different vegetables you can grow and harvest and it also allows us to do a better crop rotation and also do a lot of cover cropping kind of rehab our soils after you know almost every vegetable crop we grow so now let's go to the drawing board underneath the shed here i have the two areas the two general areas kind of mapped off on these big cards here. I've got the dream garden with those six plots. I got the back half with those four plots. And I've already written down here <clears throat> what uh, what crops we had planted there within the last year and a half or so. And I can mostly do this by memory. Sometimes I do have to pull up uh, old YouTube videos and kind of see what I did have planted there. But uh, most of the time I can remember what I got here. The Lord did bless me with an all right memory, although my wife might uh, debate that statement. But uh, <clears throat> we have what we have been planting here or have had planted in each plot, like I said, in the last year and a half or so. Now before we write down what we're gonna be planting in each plot this year and kind of talk about where and why, a few things that I'm planting and I'm doing a little differently um, that I have to account for crops that maybe I normally don't grow that I have to kind of add into the mix and figure out where they're going to go. One of those is going to be seedless watermelon. So we're trying seedless watermelons for the first time this year. We added some great new varieties to the site this fall and winter. So I can't wait to do a whole plot of seedless watermelons and give that a try. Another thing is popcorn. I've grown field corn before, but never grown popcorn. So I'm really excited to grow popcorn. When we go on our camping trips, we like to uh, take popcorn. We have this little plug-in uh, homemade popcorn maker that we like to use. So I do want to grow a whole plot of popcorn as well. So adding those two things into the mix is gonna change up things compared to previous years. Another thing I wanna do different is I wanna do a whole plot of climbing butter beans or pole butter beans. I really love those things and I wanna put a bunch of them up in the freezer. So um, gonna grow a bunch of those. Some things I'm not really gonna grow in the spring or early summer. Um, one of those would be like bush beans. We grew a ton of bush beans and pole beans last year and have a pantry full of canned um, green beans or snap beans. So I don't really need to grow any of those right now. So some things I'm not gonna grow that I grew last year. And then there are some new things, like I mentioned, that we're adding to the mix. So putting this all together can be a bit of a puzzle at first, especially when you have 10 plots. But once you get a couple of the pieces in place, kind of all comes together. Some of the plots are a little more restrictive than others just based on what's been planted there in the last year year and a half so that's what we have here in black what's been planted here in the last year year and a half and then down here is what we're going to plan to plant there spring or early summer and i'll kind of go through each one of those so this plot up here here's the road and then these are our six dream garden 30 by 35 plots um, off the road here so in this plot here, we had a cover crop of frosty bursine clover most recently. That's what the CC stands for. We've got a tarp on that now. And this is where we're going to be planting our seedless watermelon. So we had not had anything in the cucurbit family in this plot in a while. So we're good to plant seedless watermelons or any kind of melon for that matter in this plot right here. Haven't decided which variety I'm gonna go with, um, either Summer Breeze or Tailgate. Maybe y'all could help me out and tell me which one you wanna see me grow. We're gonna do a whole plot of those guys, really excited about trying those, adding those to the rotation. Over here we got our no-till experimental plot where we just finishing up with some brassicas in there. Still have some spinach and, spinach and beets, but those aren't taking up a whole lot of room. So this is where we're gonna be planting winter squash and pumpkins. 
And because there are three different species of winter squash and pumpkins, we can play around and, and at least get three different varieties in here. We've got C. Pepo, C. Maxima, and C. Machata that we can plant. And as long as we plant three different species, we don't have to really worry about a whole lot of cross-pollination there. So probably do some giant pumpkins and then do some good eating stuff, some good winter squash varieties there. Over here is where we had some okri last year and then we had a mustard cover crop we followed that okri with and on a previous video we went around searching for where we're going to put our Irish taters and we landed in this plot as the best option here. Down here is where we're going to be putting flowers. Our beehive is right here so we're going to fill this entire plot with flowers. It had a chickpea cover crop in it. We've got a tarp on that now. We're going to be putting all kinds of different flowers in here. Zinnias, Celosia, Cosmos, Ageratum, Sunflowers, just smorgasbord of flowers in here to feed our bees, attract beneficial insects, and also feed those native pollinators we have. Here is where we have our onions now, and there's still going to be a couple, you know, probably two more months on those garlic and leeks as well so we can't be in a hurry to plant anything right here because we still have stuff growing here that needs a little more time so this is where i'm going to put my popcorn i don't have to be in a big hurry to plant popcorn or field corn for that matter i can wait till it warms up pretty good so that's where we're going to be putting a whole plot of popcorn whenever these onions get done this last plot here in the dream garden we had squash and cukes last year and then a sunflower cover crop and then we got all those brassicas and some carrots in there now and those brassicas are going to be there a little while until it gets really hot and they start to bolt those collards and kale uh, will keep growing until the the heat gets to them and they start to bolt and when that happens that's going to be a great time to come in with sweet taters we don't need to plant sweet taters early in the spring because sweet taters love hot weather and so when it gets too hot for these guys, it's going to be a great time to come in and plant our sweet potato slips right here in this plot. So that covers our dream garden area, those six 30 by 35 plots. Now let's look at this back half here. So, so these plots are all different sizes. This is certainly not drawn to scale, just the best thing I can come up with based on the layout. So there's my barn right there. And here we have all the different stuff that's been planted in here within the last year or two. So in this long skinny plot, we had a whole plot of South Anna butternut squash that did great for us last year. Then we had a sunflower cover crop. Now we've got a cover crop cocktail in place there. And this is where I'm going to be planting all of my good nightshades. So tomatoes, peppers, and a few eggplants. Never grown nightshades in this plot with the exception of a few taters that survived from the floods last year after planting those. Um, so really not any nightshades hardly in this plot. So we're gonna come in here with our tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant and um, do some Florida weave, do some cages, and just fill that up with nightshades. Now, in our back half here uh, with this little plot, this is where we're gonna do our pole butter beans. So, I may do a variety called Christmas Lima that we've grown plenty in the past, or there's a new one we're supposed to be adding called King of Garden Lima, which is a pole one. May end up doing that one. But I'm basically going to take some cattle panels and make me an arch over the entire plot. Do a row here and a row here, and let them puppies just climb all over it. And then I can get underneath there in the shade and pick them babies as they're hanging down. That's the master plan. We'll see if it actually works out. Barns there. Over here, uh, we had tomatoes last year, lots of tomatoes. Then after they were done, we came in with a sorghum sedan grass cover crop. And we've got a cover crop cocktail there now, cool season stuff. And this is where I'm going to plant my first planting of sweet corn. We usually like to plant several. And depending on what opens up with all these other plots here, we'll plant another plot, you know, early to mid-summer. But our first plot of sweet corn is going to grow right, go right here. And I'm planting a variety called Yellowstone right there. This is that real big plot I was telling you about that I kind of draw an imaginary line down the middle. So in this plot, we had on this side squash and cukes last year and then beans in the fall. 
we had a bunch of different stuff over here some sweet taters we had some nightshades eggplant tomatoes peppers and now we have a cover crop cocktail there so we we'll use that imaginary line as a guide there this is where i'm going to be putting some brassicas very soon in the greenhouse at dad's place i've got some uh i didn't even spell that right did I? brassicas i've got some uh cabbage and broccoli and um, a few more brassicas there cool season stuff that we'll get in early those are going to go right there and then obviously this plot will open up once those things are done you know early summer or so late spring over here on this side this is where we're going to be planting our summer squash and then cukes or cucumbers and then also we're going to be planting our okra right here so these plots these this big plot divided in half here ends up kind of being a hodgepodge sometimes but uh, we try to keep it rotated as much as we can. So brassicas on this side, summer squash, cukes, okra here. We try to plant all of our cucurbits together um, for the most part. Summer squash and cukes, we like to plant those in the same area for rotation purposes. We like to plant our tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants in the same area for rotation purposes. You don't have to do that. It just makes it easier to rotate things over time. So hopefully that gives you a little insight as to how we go about planting our garden, where we're going to put things spring and early summer. Now, I don't do this again for fall. I really only do it one time a year in the spring. And then everything else just kind of falls into place based on when some crops are done and I can plant something else in that plot or I want to put a cover crop there. I just kind of shoot by the hip once these things are all in the ground. But in the spring, I do like to kind of write it all down and have a game plan going forward because this is my, you know, spring is the busiest planting time of year for us. We plant a good bit in fall, but definitely planting more in spring. And we like to have a plan and then I can take this layout and then kind of start mapping it out with some dates there on when I plan to get the stuff in the ground. You know, planting these 10 plots, it's not something you're going to get done all in one day or all one weekend. I like to spread it out so it's not such a big load at one time so we can kind of plan it out okay i want to get this in the ground first this in the ground next and so forth and for some of you it may be tougher to rotate just based on you know the size garden you got or the property you're working with and if you can't rotate every single crop family don't let it just drive you crazy you know think about the ones you have the most pest pressure with I don't know about you, but for us, that would definitely be nightshades and cucurbits, you know, things like squash bugs, leaf-footed bugs, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. Those things have a lot of pests. Squash, cucumbers are going to have a lot of pests. Those are the two big families as far as warm season crops go. If you can rotate every crop family, great, but really, really think about rotating those two so you're not planting those things in the same spot year after year. So I'd love to know what new stuff you guys out there have planned for spring. Like I said, we're doing popcorn and seedless watermelons as our kind of two new things. So let me know what you are planning to grow that you've never grown before that you're really excited about trying. Put those in the comments below and uh, everybody might can get some good ideas for new things they want to try. I'll put some links in the description below to some of these new varieties that we're trying this year so you can head on over to the website, check them out, and try them along with us. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this one, check out these other two videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.